All right, awesome. Thanks for joining us. It's our first real uh, learning session. It will be kind of a more laid back one because we're still getting some people onboarded. And like I said, Sarah has taken another position. So we will be recruiting another intern for Red River Market and then for Botano Farmers Market as well, which is we're still looking for. So if you guys know of people, especially in Botano, um, that's the one where Fargo has a little bit more of a population to choose from when we're doing our recruitment. So if you know of anyone, um, feel free to share this out, give them my contact information or the farmer's market internship page on the farm's website as well. And I want to start quickly just by asking um, updates on your guys' onboarding documents. And I know that some of them have gone through, but the way the portal is set up, they send them directly to our office manager. So I, I don't see them until she tells me. So I just want to check in with you guys if you have gotten those uploaded, if you ran into any issues or if you had questions. So I guess I'll start with Jenna. I have everything uploaded on there. Okay. And then I like just took a picture of my passport and uploaded mm -hmm. that. So I figure that worked for ID. So it should Perfect. all be good. All right, Karen. I had mine all uploaded last week. I just wish you could see that you uploaded it. Cause when I was asking you about the two IDs, I was like, I'm pretty sure I uploaded them. And then I was like, well, I wish I could see that I could see them, but. Yeah, I'll double check. Um, we have staff meeting on Wednesdays, so I'll double check then to make sure that we, everything that's been uploaded has made it. Um, Jessica, what about you? Um, so I uploaded all of the documents, but I just realized I forgot my two forms of ID. So I'll do that okay. once we're done here. Yep, yeah, so it's, if you have a passport handy, it can just be that, but otherwise yeah. it's a photo ID and uh, your social. Okay, and then, yeah, we just need those so that we can pay you guys. So <laughs> this, the sooner the better, but I'm glad that you guys have got those in for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, the second question is time cards. Did you guys have any issues with those this week? Okay. All right, and then activity reports. I know that the market managers were having trouble on their end approving all the activity reports, but did you guys have questions on that process at all? I'm just kind of going through my list here. T-shirts, I think I still need to hear back from you, Jessica, about the size and color you want. Yes, let me shoot you an email right now. Okay, all right, perfect, and then those are on a cycle of like every 10 days. So it'll take a little bit before you get yours, but then they like ship it directly to you. So that'll be nice. I want to quickly go over customer accounts again. We went over that in orientation, but I have a couple more resources for you guys. And Jenna, you, BizMarket has started, right? Yep. Did you? Um, have questions that came up after you did your first round of, of customer counts? Nope, not at all. The biz market here in Bismarck is probably only like half a block and we only had like 30 vendors this weekend. Okay. So it wasn't, it got done pretty quick. It wasn't too bad. We just, um, me and Claire, the, our market manager, Emily was out of town this weekend, but me and mm -hmm. Claire, she said that they have had originally been doing it on the quarter hour so ours goes from 10 to 1 so they're doing like 10 15 11 15 and 12 15 rather than the 45 because mm -hmm. at like 12 45 there's like no one in the market anyway so mm -hmm. she says that's when she was doing it last year so that's the only thing that we kind of like changed from what um you had said at the last meeting okay yeah I guess as long as it stays I would rather it stay consistent with last year's counts <laughs> so I will just make a note of that that those so I think when we get the customer account or customer counts up on the portal, I think it auto puts in the time for you. So I'll just have to make a note that you guys are doing them at the 15. Okay. Let me go ahead and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the other stuff. So I put, I put in yesterday, the, all of the orientation stuff. So we have the recording here. We have the slides I went through that kind of walk you through doing customer counts. 
But if you guys want more resources, I put them in here. These are, they kind of go over some other methods. So if your market was doing something else before, or if you have questions more about the technique, this is a good place to go. Um, so it talks a little bit about, you know, the standard error talks about the walk around method, which is what we're doing. And so this is just for you guys to kind of read through if you want to some additional resources. And then the second one I have here, instructions, is essentially that's the same stuff I shared with you during orientation, specifically on what we're doing. So if you have questions that you yeah, the count, we've kind of put that here for just a quick reference for you to do. And then this also has a way for you to record. So if you're gonna be recording these on paper and you want, you can go in here and print this out. So this could be, um, you know, there's multiple columns so you could print one out per market or kind of fill this in as you go, if you have a three hour long market, then you can get three weeks out of this. So this is just a resource for you guys if you need something to uh, record. Jenna, did you do yours? Did you write them down or did you keep them in like your phone or something? Um, we wrote them down right away. Okay. And yeah, we actually so had like those handheld clicker things. We had two of those. So it just kept the number on there in case we, um, so we like made sure not to clear it before we had recorded it. <clears throat> yes. And if you guys want, if you want a handheld clicker, farms can probably supply you with one. We do have some. So if you prefer not to have an app on your phone or you want a, you know, an analog clicker let me know and then we can get one to you next thing sorry I'm kind of rapid fire going through all the stuff on my list at the beginning here did you guys have a time any time to think about the upcoming field day which will be next Monday and do any of you are any of you for sure planning to attend I'd like to go <laughs> um, I for sure can't okay I probably can't either. I have 18 days till the wedding. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So, Jenna, do you have any food restrictions? No, not at all. And then, do you, were you interested in carpooling at all? Maybe from, I don't think there's anyone coming through Bismarck, but if you wanted to meet up in Fargo and drive down from there, we could do that. Or do you want to just drive yourself? Um, I have my own vehicle and I can just drive myself. That shouldn't okay. be a problem. I mean, if someone needs a ride, I can give them a ride from Fargo or wherever, you know, but yeah, I'm mm -hmm. fine driving. Okay. All right. That is super easy. I'll email Stephanie to let you know, and she'll be doing the coordination of the field day. So probably most of the correspondence will be from her from here on out. And next week we won't have a virtual online session. Um, because I will be at field day all day, but I will be uploading a webinar for you guys to watch um, in place of class. And you can do that at any point. What is this Minokin farm, um, like local, local treasures thing? It's like the, in the upcoming for tomorrow. Yeah, so that is not required for you guys, but it's just a field day that they're hosting. And I think there might be some more information on it. Um, it says you have to sign up by the 15th. Yeah, um, you you might be able to contact them directly to, because a lot of times you can still show up, but I would ask them. Um, yeah, it's right here. So it's just a, um, a field day and it should be, I mean, it should be fun. I. Personally, I'm not going, but if you're nearby, load. <laughs> I would shoot them an email directly if you were interested. Okay. Yeah, so, since yeah, I'm in Bristol, so it might be. Yeah, and they have a series of these. So this is one, but there are more 
at other nearby farms and they should be coming they should show up on the portal as well so oh, if you're oh, interested cool. yeah here they're on august 4th they have the future of food at the heritage center and then august 26th they have a food preservation one on back on the farm so if you're in the area definitely go and then if you go tell us about it <laughs> i will it looks yeah. kind of interesting Right. It does. I at least want to do like the walking tour since mm -hmm. yeah, Minokin's only like a 20 minute drive outside of Bismarck. So um, in the portal, I think I have, I feel like I had something else to tell you guys about the, um, yeah, Zoom link is here. I linked the farms vendor webinar. This is the recording that we, of the webinar we put on last week. So if you haven't, if you didn't attend or you haven't watched the recording, then this will be one of them and then I'll have an, another webinar. So there'll be two net webinars for you to watch next week. Um, part of it, I'm gonna go over today, but part of it is the from our vendor speaker panel will be really good for you guys to, to watch. I guess we will, I was gonna discuss COVID safety, but I think the only one who started their market right now is Jen Hun. Caleb isn't here. Um, so I guess I will have have you talk about it a little bit and then I know Karen you at least met with Elizabeth so you can talk about kind of what they're doing as well. Uh, Jenna what are the precautions that Bismarck has done what does it look like and do you think they'll be you know changing it throughout the summer can I just give a little update. Um, so as far as like social distancing, they're not really strictly enforcing that anymore, but we still have like all the hand sanitizer from last year and we still have masks and, um, like gloves. So for like handling cash or receipts when we're doing like snap payments or anything. So, um, that's pretty much where we're at. And then I tried to wear a mask like as frequently as possible. It got really, really hot. <laughs> so uh, there were times where I'd take it off and like step away, but yeah, that's about it. It's like a, a recommendation for masks. Um, there aren't any like signs or anything as far as okay. like recommending my customers um, wear masks or anything, but me and Claire can definitely talk about that and, and be a little bit better about that as well. It's definitely a changing situation. So, and it's also very, very hard to enforce right now, specifically. I know last year it was, everyone was requiring masks. So it was like just the same thing everyone else was doing. And especially being an outside open air market, enforcing that is gonna be pretty much impossible. But I think, a good way to look at it is you want to make an environment to where if someone feels more comfortable wearing a mask, they don't feel out of place or mm -hmm. like there can be a lot of stigma, I guess, around that. So um, I think the, be the best way is to make an environment to where people feel comfortable wearing a mask if they want to, because right. enforcement is not... <laughs> realistically not gonna happen uh karen have you talked did you check in with elizabeth or the rest of the crew about what you guys are doing said so just she just told me what they did last year because we have our meeting tomorrow and i'm gonna go to the oak park and we're gonna talk about what they're doing this year but she said they um it's being voted on whether they're going to have no mask, but they had gloves on for all the vendors and they would wash the surfaces, no fabric, tablecloths. They had a blank table between the selling vendor and the customer, so there would be an extra space so they would have their six feet. Um, the customer didn't touch, they would ask them to have two people, so one person would touch the cash and one person would get the produce for them. And they said it actually worked really well because people would get in line and just wait and you didn't have people swarming the tables and stuff. They kind of recommended people to prepackage stuff, but they know that that doesn't always happen. So she said that's basically, they had lots of hand sanitizer and lots of washing stations and stuff, but. Jessica, did you get a chance to check in with Heidi this week? A little bit, uh, not a ton. Um, I do know that we've got hand sanitizer that we're gonna be using and we'll have signs up recommending that people wear masks. 
Um, since we only had one last year, they didn't really get any kind of procedure in place. So I think it'll be whatever we figure out for this year. Um, depending on where we end up setting up, I do like the idea of having a good amount of space between each booth uh, to allow for some room. Yeah, and I think vendors also appreciate having a little bit of space for non-COVID reasons. They don't like to be super packed in. So yeah, I think that's one thing that um, maybe they got used to last year that they'll want to hold on to. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move on to the next topic, which I have some slides. And I'm going to be talking about kind of marketing your farmer's market, which is actually the topic for the class in two weeks. So I'll be checking in with you guys in more detail and I'll have some homework assignments for this. But um, I want to touch a little bit about making a compelled, compelling narrative for your farmer's market and just talking about um things that customers specifically are looking for so these are some slides that i did for the vendor webinar but so if you have already watched the vendor webinar this might be a little bit of a repeat for you but well, i'm going to talk a little more in depth after this about the report in the survey that we did to get these results and how you can use it specifically for your market. So this internship is funded, like I said, in orientation through a USDA farmer's market promotion program grant. And part of that was also this survey that we did in the very first year of the grant. And this was to kind of establish a baseline of what customers in North Dakota are looking for as far as farmers markets and some methods of marketing that could be helpful to farmers markets. So this is just stuff for you guys to keep in mind as you're making social media posts or press releases or writing um, emails or whatever outreach you're doing with your market. So we did this survey in 2019 of all the markets throughout, throughout North Dakota um, or as many as we could get to respond. And this also kind of helped inform our decision of which markets we chose to place interns at. So we got a total of 781 respondents and that represented 44 different markets throughout all of North Dakota. Although we did get the most responses in our urban areas, um, Bismarck, Fargo and Grand Forks. And when we asked people how they heard about the market, the number one option that people said was word of mouth. There's not as much you can do to control that from a marketing perspective, um, but really fostering that community feel where people would wanna recommend it to their friend. The second one, this green one right here is social media. So that was at 28%. And so that's the biggest thing that we can control. So Facebook mostly, but also um, Instagram. I don't, we didn't specifically pull them on the types of social media, but from other research we've done, um, it's mostly Facebook users and Instagram and very little of any other um, Snapchat or TikTok or other smaller Twitter. It's not used as much for this. Signage was at 14%. So that is like permanent signs or for your farmer's market. And then flyers and posters were at 9%. So these would be um, print, printed out signs, <laughs> smaller temporary signs in local businesses, uh, churches, community establishments, things like that. Uh, newsletters were at 4%, so a pretty small uh, percentage of people who heard about farmers markets through newsletters. And then this last section, other, is 9%, and that has all of traditional advertising. So that's 
radio ads, TV ads, newspaper ads, and then it also had um, websites as well. So what we learned from this is that social media is really important and that's why we have really made that a main part of the internship program. So we will have multiple people coming in throughout the season to talk to you guys about social media marketing. And then I'm gonna quickly go over what our customer looks like generally. So again, this is all of North Dakota and we can go into a little more depth with your specific market, but generally 64% of people visiting farmers markets are over 40 and then 32% of them were over 60. So your customers skew older, you get a lot of um, retired people who like to spend their Saturdays at the market. And then 36% of people had one or more children in their household. So you also have a lot of families visiting. 71% of people traveled five miles or less to the market, showing that it's very local people who are attending the market. 34% of people spent between 11 and $20 at the market during each trip. And then 76% spent between six and $30 with a very small amount of people spending more than $30. And then 68% shop at the market weekly or twice a month. So that is just kind of paints a picture of what your person looks like. They're very local, they are loyal customers, they're coming back. And then this isn't the bulk of their grocery shopping, but people are you know, spending a bit on their Saturdays at the market. When we asked customers the top things they cared about, it was supporting local farmers, quality, and buying locally. So people didn't care as much about the cost of the items as much as they cared about high quality, locally grown items. When we asked customers what they wanted more of or what would um, make the market better, the number one response overwhelmingly was more growers, but we also saw people saying they would like to see more meat and cheese vendors, prepared food vendors, um, a smaller amount saying organic, and then a small amount saying more artists and crafters as well. So what does this mean for you? Just think about, you know, your customer is loyal, like I said, so in your outreach and marketing, you want it to be personal. You want them to be able to connect with the vendors and the people at the market and build a relationship. So sharing uh, people's faces, their families and their stories is really gonna be the most effective way. And then these are also local people. So talking about the benefits that your farmer's market or um, your product specifically has on the economy and highlighting the quality over everything else um, and the impact that that has. So these are the slides that I have prepared, but if you want to delve into it a little bit deeper, um, I have under the homework tab here, the full report. So it would be good for you guys to take a little bit of time to go through this more specifically. I took all my data from this for the slides, but um, it's kind of a simplified version of it. So you can find a lot more background information here if you want to look through it. Um, did you guys have questions at all on any of the data or comments or input? There's a lot of good information, I like it. Yeah, it's um, we we learned a lot about the customers, so I think it's definite. Yeah, definitely things to keep in mind as you move forward. Um, so I'm not going to go super in depth on this, but this is just showing you the information, the markets that we surveyed are listed here. Um, this is that demographics again: age, um, children. So we have it all here and you guys can look. We have other things that we measured, how long that they spend at the market and things like that. So this 
is a good resource, but there's, if you want to get even more in depth, which this isn't required, but this is if you want to uh, just delve into it under the resources tab. And then we have the 2019 farmers market survey. We have the survey results by market. So this is data specifically on some of the markets. We don't have um, Spirit Lake just because there was no market at that point, but Biz Market, Red River Market, Town Square, and Minot Farmers Market are here. If you want to look specifically at the results of people from this, from your market. So we have those same questions. Um, and then it's highlighted in dark green, the most common response, and then in light green, the second most common. So for example, looking at biz market, most people visited twice a month and the second most visited weekly versus in the rest of them, we had more people visiting weekly. Although it's so close and it's, you know, these two twice a month or weekly are still the highest options. Distance traveled, again, for everyone less than five miles was the largest response. The budget, um, this one's really interesting because for Red River Market, we actually had people who were spending more than $30, which um, is not the largest group for any other uh, for any other market. Red River Market has a lot of um, food trucks and hot food vendors. So I think that people um, are often staying there for a little longer and spending a little bit more money versus some of the other markets that are in and out more quickly. So then age, and then we also asked if you're shopping at any other businesses in town, um, whether that was other food shopping or not. And then we also have this information on how they heard about the market. So this is under the resources tab if you guys wanna look into this for your market specifically. And then this is the 2019 data. I am not showing the 2020 data because as you guys know, it was a, an off year. So I don't know how useful or comparable that would be for you, but just, um, well, I guess we'll see after this here how it all compares. I have, well, I'll give a minute for questions, but then I kind of want to talk to you guys about what sort of marketing campaigns you have talked about with your market manager, what you think you'll be doing this summer, and if this data I just showed you, you know, kind of changes any of that stuff you've thought about, or I guess I just want to hear what you guys have in mind for this summer. So I had already looked at that and um, Elizabeth had gone to the vendor thing. So we already had the same information. So we are looking at the different demographics of young people and older people that come to the market. We were trying to figure out if we should start like an email group because older people tend to not be on social media, but they're not, not computer savvy sometimes. They still like check email and something. So we mm -hmm. were waiting if maybe we should start like an email distro list that we can send out weekly. And then I had thought later on that maybe we should have something that like has a bio of the farmer, like meet your farmer so they can be personalized. And then people know who their farmers are and then what days they, they're there so that they can have, get to know the farmers that are selling at the market, so. Yeah, that's, um, for some of that stuff too, it's really helpful, you know, you ask your farmers questions, you know, you get a photo and a bio from them and some information and then, you can use that same information for a Facebook post, an Instagram post, um, and then put that in an email or a newsletter as well. So it's really, I think those vendor spotlights are 
especially important because people do really like to know who they're supporting. And then repurposing as much as you can because it takes a bit of time to, you know, get a nice looking photo and something that sounds good written up. So using that in as many ways as you can to try and reach as many people is a really good idea. Definitely. So at the biz market, we were kind of thinking about doing that too, like doing like a weekly or like a bi-weekly vendor <laughs> spotlight, like whoever's RSVP for the market that week, like kind of do like a little spotlight for them and go through all of them throughout the season. Um, a lot of them, I thought it would be cute, like for day of, a lot of the <clears throat> vendors like bring their families and they, there's always little kids running around and there's this particular little cute kid who was wearing like his t-shirt said mini farmer. And so I think it'd be cute going forward to do like mini market fashion with, you know, permission from the parents. If you take a little picture of a cute kid, I know everyone likes to see that on social media and stuff like that. And we also do like a weekly vendor lineups, so, like Thursday is we, um, we'll post like our entire, everyone who's RSVP'd, yes, so everyone kind of knows who's going to be at the market. And we kind of want to um, like start kind of gathering like who has lunch items and stuff like that, like who's going to have like an actual lunch you can buy or if it's a food truck. So that when people see that on social media, you know, if they're not necessarily just coming to the market to buy produce and they can come to the market to get lunch from one of the food trucks or one of the vendors and we can kind of bring people in that way and um and then we have a kids market in august that we want to do like a lot of marketing for and so we're kind of looking for like kids ideas and how to involve like you know kids in the whole process and stuff like that so i know that last here we had a speaker and they talked about bringing in like kids performance groups, you know, dance or singing or quite, you know, whatever it is. And she made a really good point that people love watching kids because they're cute, but there's also the fact that for every kid comes to the market, they bring like five family members mm -hmm. because, you know, the parents come, the siblings come, the grandparents come, and so it's a really, really effective way to up your numbers is to have like a kid's day like that. Mm -hmm. Jessica, I know you only briefly met with Heidi and you guys are still probably figuring everything, everything out, but did you have input? Um, yeah, actually, I, I kind of came into this with lots of ideas. Um, um, we were, we're going to focus a lot on social media and trying to get that presence really built up because I think that's probably the best way that we've got um, to use word of mouth uh, in our community. So we're gonna work on getting that together. And then also uh, I discovered we have a large format printer in our office. So I'm, I'm thinking posters just everywhere that I can possibly get people to let me put them. Um, you know, saying, hey, are you looking to be a vendor at a farmer's market? Send us your information. Hey, there's a farmer's market. Um, just to try and get people's attention because um, while social media is great in some ways, we also have issues with internet connection for some of our residents. So I need to be a little more low tech on that end. Um, we're also partnering with a podiatry clinic so that we're kind of right next door while that's happening. So we can maybe benefit from some of the people coming to see them. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a really good point about signage. A lot of people, like even in that survey, when we asked how they heard about the farmer's market, they will say word of mouth, but they probably saw a poster, you know, at least five times, you know, they walked by it five times and saw it and recognized it but they never really thought to go until someone else says to them oh we heard about the farmer's market I'm going this weekend so um what people word of mouth is super important but sometimes people don't realize how many times they've seen that message until someone they know <laughs> says it to them yeah, so I do I think, think like, social media is just kind of the booster for word of mouth same with posters mm -hmm. it's just another way to put the idea in front of people so they start talking about it mm -hmm. 
absolutely. Is there any topics that you guys would really like to see? I'm kind of, I have an outline for our learning plan this summer, but is there anything that you're thinking of right away you'd like to hear more about? Um, any you know, specific marketing techniques or general farmer's market, anything that you would like me to bring in? A, you know, we have a few speakers who will come, in, come throughout the season, but I definitely wanna hear what you guys are interested in so we can make sure to have that represented. So I know the biz market wants to recruit like more produce vendors. And so I think like if we could emphasize like vendor recruitment and, you know, tips and tricks there, that would be a good idea. I was actually going to say the same thing because I think that was a problem for Spirit Lake also was vendor recruitment. And that is, you know, when we did that survey, the number one thing people want is more produce. And you'll even have people complain there's not enough, you know, they'll show up to the farmer's market expecting a bountiful harvest of, you know, of uh, all the vegetables, but we do have a short growing season, you know, and a limited, we have a limited market for producers to sell outside of these kind of direct sales like farmer's markets. So I definitely, I definitely agree with you guys and we will try to bring, try to bring people in on that. Um, we do have that webinar we just did that you guys can watch or maybe you have watched. But also I think thinking about food vendors in general, because I don't wanna say like, the amount of produce vendors that you're going to be able to recruit is gonna depend on the amount of produce vendors in the area. And while it's definitely a growing number, it's still, you know, we the amount of small produce farms that we have around is still not as many as we would like. So thinking about helping your existing vendors maybe diversify or, you know, add in value added products, you know, doing jams or jellies or also, you know, someone who is normally just bringing tomatoes and carrots and lettuce to also maybe think about doing, yeah, baked goods or preserved goods, pickled goods. People just want to see food, you know, and the produce, is maybe the most preferred by your customers, but in general, um, more, the more options, better. Any other topics? Just commenting on that. I've heard about it and I never went, but that's why, and then Elizabeth confirmed it. We actually have a run on the market at 9 a.m. on, on, cause we do it Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. And people are there like waiting, like open, 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 like waiting for it to open and run on the market. And they said that the restriction, the COVID restrictions helped with that tremendously last year because people would literally be, get people that would normally not be rude were very rude to each other at the market. Yeah. And we do have vendors in some markets literally selling out, you know, within the first hour or two. Um, I think part of just, yeah, explaining to people who are there lined up that, you, you know, that person probably wouldn't be lined up outside of Target at 10 a.m. You know, they have to treat the vendors as if, you know, treat it as if it's a store. This is for some people their business. So <laughs> to be respectful of that, but it definitely is, there's more demand than product specifically for those produce vendors. Well, it was great sitting and listening to you all. And it was reminding me that, you know, farms exist to educate and support those new vendors, to, to create those new farmers so that you have new vendors at the market. And um, one of the things we want to do this summer is do outreach at your farmer's markets. Um, I still need to 
work with my our communications coordinator Nora to to figure out what that will look like but um, somehow we'll provide you some outreach materials and information about farms so that people can learn about the programs that we have people who might be thinking about farming or expanding their small farm so that they could become a vendor. And one of those programs is our farm beginnings course, which we offer in the winter. So if we can use the farmers markets as an avenue to tell more people that that about that course, um, we can create more vendors, grow more farmers for you for next season. But that's not why I'm here. <laughs> that was just a tangent. Um, so Felicity, I was going through your emails and responding. Um, so first was that some of you couldn't um, submit experience reports, correct? They could submit them, but the market managers couldn't, like once they were submitted, they could, the market managers did, couldn't see that they were there. Okay. Well, part of it was that there was a glitch um, that I probably accidentally introduced into Airtable. Um, and so I sometimes if you click, it creates an extra field and then that makes the website break. So that's been fixed. So hopefully the managers should be able to approve now and we will we'll follow up. I guess we'd have to follow up with a manager or maybe we can see it on our end too. So we'll make sure that that has solved the problem. Um, but the other thing was, we still need to add a way for you to report your customer counts through the portal. And um, Felicity, this turns out is not as simple as us adding some fields to the report because the customer counts are more complex. Um, because you're counting on the hour. So Robert is going to work on adding that, but I need information from the market so that he can do that. So I need to know the days and hours of operation for each market. So I popped on because I thought maybe the three interns that are here might have that information right now. Okay, Jess does not. No, we're still working on, on setting up our dates because we're partnering with that foot clinic. So we're not sure when okay. we're- uh, I have a quick comment from the peanut gallery. And is it correct that um, only Jenna has submitted her experience report? Is, just to confirm, you only need that when you start your farmer's market because we haven't started our farmer's market yet. Uh, no, the experience report is weekly because a lot of what you're reporting on is what you're learning in class and the readings and things you're doing. Okay. So we just wanted to make sure that 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 was in fact true that only Jenna has submitted it and not a glitch like that other people had submitted and it just wasn't showing up. So it sounds like that is true. I just wasn't aware that I was supposed to report homework. So I guess I just forgot that that was part of the yeah, and for this first week, it might be a really short report, even these first couple weeks before your market starts and while you get going. But even if you don't necessarily have something to say for every single field, um, just write what you did. And like even meeting with, with Elizabeth to go over your learning plan, you know, you can put that in too. Um, and then as we get into market season, they might get a little bit longer but it's start them now and get in the habit of it you know even if you don't have much to report yet jenna do you have the days and hours for biz market yeah biz market is on saturdays from 10 a.m to 1 p.m okay and has it when did it start it started um the beginning of june so i think this last saturday was the third um, the third market, it was my first one, but it was their third. <laughs> okay. Okay. Saturdays from 10 to 1. Yep. Okay. And Karen, yours yours has like three or four days, three right? Days. 
three days. They used to all be from nine to 12, but they're changing Tuesday from four to seven. Okay. Is that in addition to or instead of? Instead of, okay. so it's only four to seven on Tuesday. Okay, Tuesdays from four to seven. Thursday morning, nine to 12, and Saturday, nine to 12. Okay. And they're voting tomorrow on what day they're starting, so we don't have a start date yet. Okay. I'm going to that meeting tomorrow. And that's mine at Farmer's Market. Yes. Felicity, do you remember, I mean, is Red River Market the same? Yes, opening day, July 10th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then it the last one is October 30th. We'll just need to get the information from Caleb for Town Square and then um, once you guys know, you can let us know, Jess. And Minot, Biz Market, Town Square, Red River Market, Spirit Lake. Oh, and we haven't recruited the sixth one yet. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, that's all I needed. Thank you. Okay. Hey, yeah. I'm glad it worked out. <laughs> it was actually reminded me of two things I wanted to tell you guys. <laughs> um, and that was, I wanted to talk a little bit about doing on farm visits because I don't think I talked about this during orientation, but throughout the season, we would like you guys to not only be taking photos and doing social media posts at the market, but to connect with the vendors and farmers specifically and go out to a couple of those of their farms to get some photos. And we talked about doing vendor features already. So this would be the perfect time to get some of that information, um, biographical information, and just kind of, you know, ask them how they got started, you know, how long they've been farming, why they farm at market. And you can capture that information in a few different ways. We will in a different week go over doing Google Forms and other methods like that, but it could be as simple as taking a clipboard and going out to their farm with them. Um, but just something to keep in mind throughout the summer that we will be asking you guys to do that. So uh, maybe think about a couple vendors that have a really nice booth or maybe vendors that you have already have a relationship with that would be um, willing and interested in having you guys come out and do some photos. And the other thing, oh, go ahead. Maybe it's what you were about to say. I was gonna ask if you've talked with them about intern spotlights. I have not. Um, our communications coordinator, Nora, will be reaching out to you guys to do spotlights on you. So that actually might be a good example of how to set up a Google form because she'll be sending out that with, you know, some basic information about you and what you do uh, with your market and then uploading a photo of yourself as well. And we'll, we'll do features throughout the season on you guys. We're also doing them on our sustainable ag interns as well. So you can see some examples of what those look like, because she's already started those. Mm -hmm. And what I was gonna say is, as you're taking photos and you know sharing what you do for your market, if you want to tag farms, either in Facebook or your Instagram posts, um, and feel free to post directly about you know, what you're doing with farms. Like I want you to do your market outreach of you know, sharing photos of the products and the vendors for the market. But if you have time, it would be great to get some photos of what you guys are doing. And um, you know, behind the scenes of you at market with vendors or you know, whatever it is that you are doing while you're there and tag farms so we can share that out as well. I know Nora has some campaigns that she's going to be doing later and she gave me like a specific hashtag that I don't have right now but as we get further into the season I'll give you kind of the specifics on that 
you will get reimbursed for the miles that you um mileage for going to the field day and back and food will be available at the field day so you should have your meals taken care of with that but yeah driving we can cover okay. did you guys have questions at all before we before we head out all right, I think that's everything. I have all the t-shirts in, so we should be able to place those orders and get those to you. Um, yeah, and then I think you guys have all gotten your learning plan in, except for maybe Jessica, <laughs> but that's totally, totally fine. You guys are working on a lot, but yeah, just try and get that in as soon as you can, but definitely before your market season starts so that you have a plan for your what you'll be working on moving forward. Okay, all right, well, other than that, I'm good to go. You guys enjoy the rest of your night.